Hi everyone, it's Dawn and I hope you're having a fantastic day. Well, if you're one of those people who like to get the top level of a cruise line, be pinnacle class or elite status, well, this story might make you jealous as a 10 year old has just reached the highest status with one cruise line. We also have a uh, testing going on again to get off the ship in some ports. We arrived in New York City on Holland America's 150th anniversary, and uh, I got some stories about that. And then if you were wondering just how serious Carnival was with their new policies about disruptive cruise passengers, I got a story for you that could be a pretty big warning. First story, if you love collecting those points, you're loyal to Royal, or you're you're a celebrity person, whatever you want to be, and you want that highest status level, and you know how long sometimes it can take to reach that high, high level, well, there's a 10-year-old that got one. Now, I am kind of cheating here. It's, if, if you count it in dog years, he's 70. <laughs> we have a, a service dog, Joska, who uh, has just reached 50 cruises and 700 days at sea with Holland America and was honored here in New York City with the highest, he had, the, the dog has its own medallion. And of course, it's a black lab, very true to my heart. <laughs> my old dog, Nico, was a black lab. This one's 10 years old and uh, she looks absolutely sweet. Apparently, the crew, it brightens the cruise day every time she's on board, and I can just, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> you know, who doesn't like to have a big, friendly dog on board? Uh, yeah, but 700 days. That's rivaling a lot of people. A lot of people. So congratulations, Joska, on reaching the highest level with Holland America, the first one to do so with Holland America, so congratulations. We also have some news back coming from Australia. You know they've had some outbreaks out there of COVID and they're just reopening, so everything's new to them of what their procedures are. Well, the procedures have started up again that they are now testing passengers on some ships in some ports to get off the ship. So it's no longer guaranteed that you'll be able to get on and off the cruise ship. You'll have to test uh, at least right now, uh, that in the future that could go away. But it's been reported that on the Coral Princess to get off in Fremantle, they had to test to get off the ship on the Coral Princess. So uh, if you're heading to Australia anytime soon, remember, they're just opening up. Things are uh, like can change at a moment's notice. And so you got to remember, you got to roll with the punches. Um, it might not be the best thing out there for you. You might not be happy about it, but there's not a whole lot we can do about it right now. And the Holland America Rotterdam 7, actually, just left New York City after spending an overnight uh, to mark the 150th transatlantic crossing of the first Rotterdam one. There was a big ceremony on board. They had, uh, you know, a 25 piece orchestra come on board past members of the Lincoln Center and they performed a special three special numbers that were composed and written just for this event it was very nice ceremony um, on board they were handing out chocolates and they had a lot of the servers dressed in white in the old um, garb that you they used to wear things like that but Here's where expectation and reality kind of collide, right? How many times do you, you know, you're going to go say, see a movie and you heard it's fantastic. So your expectation is way up here and then you get there and the reality is it, it's more down here. Or you go to a theme park after dreaming about going to the theme park forever and I'm finally going to say Walt Disney World, first time ever, and you get there and your expectations are way up here and the reality's down here, right? Well, that's kind of how a lot of passengers are feeling on this ship. Like, 
this is a, a big, they did do some commemorative things, like they partnered with Ellis Island in a big celebration here. Uh, they had marked, I think it's October 27th, as Holland America Day in New York City to celebrate the all the bringing of immigration into New York City in the history and things like that. But as far as a big, hey, here's the pomp and ceremony, right? Here's the pomp and ceremony of this big, big event. People were expecting, I, th these are the rumors I heard on board, and I was kind of expecting some of them as myself, right? They expected to see, like, the fireboats out and with the big hose ceremonies following the ship into port. Now, we arrived earlier in the morning, probably wouldn't have been able to see it, and so, no, they wouldn't do it. But how about sail away? They didn't do anything at sail away for that. Now, what we did do was we did a 360 in front of the Statue of Liberty. We, in fact, we did it twice before sailing out of the harbor. Nice, but pomp and ceremony, it, we, we did a circle with the boat. There was no celebration there. People were expecting maybe fireworks or something. There was nothing. Fanfare on the dock. Some, there was nothing that was really a standout to say, hey, this is a very special cruise, 150th anniversary. Bam! Here it is, folks. Look at us. Look at us. And there was nothing. Nothing really. As far as being a passenger on board for the uh, sail out of New York City or the arrival in New York City, other than the party that was here. Um, and that was a lot of invited guests who came on only for the day, only for that celebration and then got off the ship. So as far as being a guest on board looking for something special, I think the expectation was there, but the reality was there wasn't a whole lot actually kind of disappointed kind of disappointed and i know a lot of other guests were as well as they came to me and said what's happening what's going on is there anything that we are we going to see the fireboats tonight are we going i think there's fireworks don i think there's going to have fireworks no there, there was really really nothing not even a band on the dock to say goodbye <laughs> so yeah a little disappointing there and a lot of guests are talking about that uh this morning i know that for sure okay now i do have this story about carnivals and their cracking down on disruptive passengers but be before i get there let me just invite you to hit that subscribe button if you haven't done so already if you want to keep up to date with everything cruising from what's happening from the new ships coming out from the new protocols, the changing protocols all over the world to new ship reviews and just celebrations like this at Holland America's 150. What can you expect if you're on these kind of sailings? Just hit the subscribe button. Doesn't cost a thing. Really does help the channel out and I really do appreciate it. Okay, straight on. Carnival has been making a bunch of changes after we had all of those you know, uh, brawls on board certain ships over the summer, and uh, they said, okay, we're going to start fining people, we're going to come down hard on people. Well, that has, there's some cases now coming out of what happened, uh, in, in some cases. Uh, one example that has come out, a longtime loyal Carnival passenger, loves Carnival Cruise Line, had a little too much to drink with the free drink package, or the drink package they had on board, and has admitted that they got very, very mouthy on board to the crew members. That's all they're saying. Carnival's not saying anything else. They're just saying they got dis the passenger was disruptive and uh, caused a commotion on board. They're not going into any details. Was the person brought by security to his cabin? Was he quarantined? Whatever. All they're saying is that he got very inebriated and very mouthy. And remember, this is a long-time Carnival person. Well, they uh, they were fined five hundred dollars, which is which is bad enough, right? Five hundred dollar fine. Who wants an extra five hundred dollars on their bill when you come off a cruise ship? 
But not only that, this passenger had almost nine other bookings booked on Carnival Cruise Line, and they were all canceled. That person lost all nine bookings that they had planned for their Carnival Cruise Line. Um, I imagine they got their money back. The story really doesn't go on to say whether they got their money back, but I imagine if Carnival canceled it, they got their money back. But if you love a particular cruise line, and now you can't go on that cruise line, not only that, it's Carnival Cruise Line, and they own Holland, Princess, p &O, Costa, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. You got to think to yourself, does that mean this person can no longer sail on those cruise lines neither? Wow. All for one incident. Now, for them to go that far, I think the disruption had to be pretty severe, right? I don't think it was a matter of, you know, just uh, disagreeing about something. I think something else happened, but we don't really know the details because that's private and Carnival, rightly so, is not putting out details. They're not giving us names. They're not giving us details of what happened. They're just saying, passenger did this, passenger got disruptive, they were fined, and now they're also, all their cruises were canceled. A warning for all of us that Carnival is taking these disruptions very, very serious because they don't want to be known as the troubled cruise line, the brawling cruise line, the Walmart of cruise lines. They got these brand new ships coming out, the Celebration, they've got the Mardi Gras, they've got beautiful, beautiful ships coming out and they want to be known as the family friendly cruise line, not, you know, <laughs> the Walmart and the five and dime of the cruise industry. So they're going to come down hard. So I think we should all take notice. Well, I hope you appreciate this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. We'll see more tips, more tricks, more travel vlogs from around the world. Hit that subscribe button. Till next time, have yourself a safe and a great vacation.